Welcome back to the congregation of St. Augustine's after the level 5 of the lockdown. It's good to see you again. Cordial welcome to visitors. Cordial welcome to those who may be watching and participating on the website, the Sunday Eucharist of St. Augustine's. Limerick City, Ireland. Today is Gaudete Sunday. We're invited to rejoice as we come near to the birth of Christ our Saviour. You will notice the vestment colour is rose or pinkish. And we have the pink candle lit for the third Sunday of the Advent season. So we are invited to rejoice on this Sunday in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today's Sunday, the Lord's Day, day of rest, the day to be with the family who come to church as one family. Take a moment. Don't worry, somebody will be here. to worship, to praise and thank the Lord for his goodness towards us. Let us take a brief moment in silence to present ourselves before the Lord, knowing he's all forgiving. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joy of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. 
He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to bind up the hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favor from the Lord. I exult for your I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the response is, My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy be his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He fills the starving with good things sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things give thanks to God because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gifts of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. A man came sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, Are you Elisha? 
I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, the voice, the cries in the wilderness. Make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you're not the Christ, and not Elijah, and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize you with water, for there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I'm not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, on the far side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word of the Lord. It's Gaudete Sunday. We were invited to rejoice. In the passage of Scripture, Jesus said, Even the stones would scream out rejoicing at the birth of the Lord. So to look at the alarm system was rather convenient and appropriate that the alarm system was screeching out because of Gaudete Sunday. You must have a positive outlook on life. There must have been a reason for the alarm system to go off at the beginning of the Sunday liturgy. On the third Sunday of Advent, you can see the pinkish, the rose candle, and the priest wearing rose color vestments symbolizing Gaudete. We're invited to rejoice, as I said, because we're approaching Christmas night, the birth of the Savior, the Messiah. There's a reason to rejoice. Certainly there's an occasion to rejoice, to celebrate God among us in the person of Jesus. If you like, there is a similarity of the Lenten season with the Advent season. Advent as Lent also are about preparing ourselves spiritually. And there has to be a certain asceticism during this season. But today is an exception because we're coming close to Christmas night. Those of us who are over 60 years of age will recall the rigidity, the severity of the old church. The Advent season and the Lenten season were meant to fast to meditate, to give alms to the poor. If you remember in the Lenten season, weddings were not allowed to be performed during the Lenten season. We were brought up with a certain solemnity. Even some Catholics will approach the confessional for confession, for the sacrament of reconciliation, and I said some during this season of Advent. It's a good and wholesome thought to approach for the sacrament of reconciliation. Gaudete reminds me of the following. This is an association of ideas for me personally. It reminds me as a clerical student in Dublin studying philosophy at the Milltown Institute a Jesuit professor called me into his office 
And he said to me, you're rather a serious young man, Paul. I was only 22 years of age. He advised me to cultivate a sense of humor. And he quoted G.K. Chesterton, the great English author. He said, life is so serious, it ought not to be taken too seriously. At the time, I didn't understand as a young man what the Jesuit professor was advising me, but on reflection and after a period of time and after some assimilation of what he said to me, I decided to work on balancing seriousness, solemnity with joy, happiness, and a sense of humor. St. John the Baptist is primarily perceived as rigid, severe, and serious, and yet obviously he had to have characteristics of joy and happiness. We can see in the gospel today he's enthusiastic about everyone to prepare for the way of the Lord. He says, he is merely giving testimony to Christ who is to come after him, the light of the world, the Messiah. He answers the scribes and the Pharisees in all humility. He answers their questions. He says categorically, I am not the Christ. I am not the one you're waiting for. The one who comes after me is the Christ, the Messiah and I'm not worthy to unstrap his sandals. The Advent season is a time to reflect and to allow these days the birth of Christ to be born within our hearts and our souls. Now Jesus, on the other hand, could be perceived as a happy-go-lucky guy sent to the heal the broke-hearted to proclaim freedom to those weighed down with burdens to comfort the sad ones to comfort those who are grieving Jesus mingles with sinners he sits at the table with them he doesn't seem to be quite serious and yet he is in his own way but people are attracted by his positive attitude, his beautiful gestures towards the poor, and his, in his demeanor, they see the goodness of God in him. Yet he is also serious in the sense that he gets upset with us when we hurt ourselves. He wishes us to live life in its fullness. You see, when we when we're worried and stressed out, we allow burdens to invade our minds and our hearts, which only get us down into the doldrums. And the Lord is upset with us for not taking care of ourselves. St. Paul, in his reading today to Thessalonians, gives sound advice. He says to the Christians of Thessalonica, which applies to us today. Rejoice. And he says, rejoice always the same. Paul, rejoice in the Lord. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. Take care of your own spirit. Take care of your mind and your soul and your heart. Always focus on goodness because in doing good we will find happiness and contentment as we await Christmas night to rejoice fully on the birth of God made flesh in the person of Jesus. So let us rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always 
And again I say rejoice. We're invited to renew our baptismal promises to the Lord and one another as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead, descended to heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. There is a body of the last which was presented before the Lord. Pray for the recently released Elizabeth and Sister Monica Lockman, Griffin, Mora. Elizabeth Ford, Dermot Bradley, Bernadette Donnelly, Jared Keenan, Brenda O'Brien, Phyllis O'Mahony, Marie Therese White, Kevin O'Dwyer, Philomena Casey, Ying Wan Lee, Dominic Meehan, Nula Cosgrave, John P. O'Donnell. And for all the deceased members of our families, relatives, and friends, that the good Lord Jesus would take them unto himself, Lord, hear us. We take a brief moment in silence to present our own personal petitions before the presence of the Lord. Lord, hear us. We say together to Our Lady, the Mother of our Saviour, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We may be seated. As you know about the collection, we have boxes there, offertory collection at Roche Street, and two there at the glass doors. So, immediately after Mass, if you would please leave your offertory and thank you for your generosity and the upkeep of St. Augustine's. that our sacrifice may be accepted to God the Almighty Father. May the 
sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him. With love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we're preparing for Christmas night as you rejoice now at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts of bread and wine, we pray, by sending down upon them your Holy Spirit, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the time came for him to suffer, at the night of the Last Supper, he took bread from the table, and giving you thanks, Almighty Father, he broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have us worthy to your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Brendan, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, and all Christians throughout the world. We pray in silence for the deceased members of our families, relatives, and friends, for all the names on the altar list of the dead, for all of those who died of coronavirus, and for all of those who are unknown to us. All who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all of that in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. Augustine, St. Monica, the patron saints of the various diseases and plagues, St. Corona, St. Rosalia, Holy Victor, St. Rock, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Ruchim wihiti mihin in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all riches, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Lord's Prayer is the ideal of all prayer. Indeed, it's the pattern of all prayer. It's the ideal and powerful prayer we have in communion with the Spirit of Jesus, our elder brother. Let's pray together with confidence to God, our loving Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Grace, you grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the fate of your church. And grace, you grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. You're very good for keeping the guidelines, approaching the communion stations for Holy Communion, and I trust you will do it again. But just for those who may be new to the church, you come to Central Isle only, we're two meters apart, and return to your seats, the same seats you're sitting on now, you return by the side aisles, and there will be no communion on the tongue due to the high risk of infection. There will only be communion given on the hand. Thank you for your understanding. Behold Jesus, the bread of life, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life. Amen.
announcement about Christmas Masses. First of all, it is advisable for those who are vulnerable and with underlying health conditions not to come to the 24th or 25th of this month to Masses, because there will be a bit of a crowd. So there is a concession because of the pandemic. You may assist, attend any Mass during this month, before the 24th, and that will be your Christmas Mass. Due to the COVID restrictions, 
you must book a ticket for the Christmas masses and there's only 50 people allowed in the church government advice so you contact Charlotte the secretary, the lady who's playing the guitar at the Priory from Monday to Friday she is not here on Saturday and Sunday Monday to Friday is the time to call between 9 and 5 p.m. So the Masses will be on Christmas Vigil 24th. There will be a 7 p.m. Mass, a 9 p.m. and a 10.30 p.m. We are sorry there will be no Children's Family Mass this year at 5 p.m. because of the crowds and we will be arrested by the Gardaí if priests allow this. As you all know. And the Christmas Day Masses are 7 30 in the morning and 9, our usual 9 o'clock, and the usual 11 15 a.m. So we have Extra Mass, which is the 7 p.m., the 24th. And at 10.30 p.m. is a new Mass. But this year, because of the pandemic, and we have the usual 9 p.m. The 24th of December in the morning time, the usual program of Mass is 7.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 10.15 a.m. And I repeat again, if you're over 70 and you're vulnerable, and you have underlying health conditions. You shouldn't come to these masses with 50 people. You're advised this year to attend any mass before the 24th and consider it your Christmas mass. Thank you for your understanding and you were really top class. You were excellent for approaching the communion stations. Thank you for following the guidelines. And you could tell Michal Martin that too, you're excellent. And Mr. Houlihan. I'll say no more. That's my sense of humor that I was asked to cultivate by the Jesuits when I was 22 years old. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with and you. With may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you and remain with you forever in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Son, the Eucharist is ended. We may go in the peace of Christ, have a pleasant Sunday with your families, and stay safe.